Hey everyone, I'm Molly Wood and welcome to the Buzz Report, the show about the tech news that everyone is talking about. This week, iPhone 4S has a comeback just in time for Blackberry's collapse. Netflix can't make up its mind and watch what happens when Bravo steals our jokes. First up, it's the Gadget of the Week. The Gadget of the Week is the iPhone 4S, or as I'm calling it, the Comeback Kit. See, last week I was calling it the iPhone Not 5, and actually even the iPhone 4 Psych. The iPhone 4S announcement was greeted with pitchforks and torches because it wasn't an iPhone 5. Never mind the fairly impressive guts, a dual core processor, much better battery life. It's a world phone now. It has a better wireless antenna for improved call quality and faster data, and an even more amazing camera, plus iOS 5 and all that cool Siri voice assistant technology. But none of that seemed to matter because it wasn't a redesigned Apple phone until pre-order time. Apple said pre-orders topped 1 million in just 24 hours. Shipments are now delayed from every carrier and Sprint sold out of the low-end model almost immediately. iPhone 4S appears to be a hit, which, I mean, what did you expect? It is a new iPhone, even if it doesn't look like a new iPhone. That's just what happens. Now it is, of course, hard not to imagine that sales of the iPhone 4S were helped by the outpouring of sadness and support in the wake of Steve Jobs passing away last week. In fact, on Twitter and elsewhere, people were calling the phone the iPhone 4S, as in for Steve. Even in death, he is the world's best salesman. You'll be missed, Steve. Now on to the news. Oh, research in motion. RIM's BlackBerry server suffered a multi-day outage this week, and no one in North or South America was getting any email at all. That's bad, because pretty much all a BlackBerry can do these days is email. It's extra bad since it's happening just as the iPhone 4S comes out. A bunch of new phones were announced at CTIA this week, and the Samsung Galaxy Nexus with Android ice cream sandwich is looming. Also, activist investors are trying to fire RIM's two CEOs or even force a takeover. RIM is maybe trying to sell and doesn't really want to be the busted toaster at the garage sale. And also, they would really like to convince you to buy some BlackBerry 7 phones. So there's bad timing, and then there's I can't even believe this smoking crater is happening right before my eyes timing. This is the last one. Oh, hey, you know, maybe BlackBerry could split up its phone and email services and spin off the email services into like a company called Quickster, because I hear that name's available again. That's right, after the disastrous announcement that Netflix would spin off its DVD rental service into the new company called Quickster, Netflix CEO Reed Hastings is taking a mulligan. Netflix emailed its customers to let them know it is not splitting into two companies after all, and DVD rentals will still be part of Netflix. Sorry for any confusion. Unfortunately, everyone's so mad at Netflix now that even this whole listening to the customer news was greeted with fury and mocking. Possibly because, as far as we know, the crappy price hike and the weak sauce streaming library are also staying with Netflix. I mean, you can only listen to your customers so much, you know? In Facebook news this week, don't panic, it's not another redesign. This is actually good news. Facebook finally launched its iPad app this week after a no-show at F8 and Apple's iPhone 4S launch event. Best part about it? The photos actually work, like they never seem to on Safari. Oh, no, no, wait. That's not true. The best, best part about the iPad app is that there's no ticker. I know. Go get it. A Google engineer this week accidentally published an almost 5,000-word memo that was meant to be an internal-only note. It says that Google Plus is an example of Google's, quote, complete failure to understand platforms. Ouch. He says Google Plus was a knee-jerk reaction, that Google is openly hostile to platforms, and that they just tried to whip up a Facebook clone with no outside developer support, and their efforts are doomed to fail. Also, that poor Google engineer accidentally posted the whole thing publicly on Google Plus, because it's like impossible to use and figure out what's public and what's not. It's just all so true, Google. Do not fire that guy. Seriously. And finally, something new and exciting. A major network is casting for a reality show 
about young professionals in the Silicon Valley. You know, this sounds really familiar. I can't quite put my finger on it. Oh, yes. The real rich white guys of Silicon Valley, every Thursday at 9, 8 central, only by Bravo. Watch what happens. Yeah, hey, Major Network, if that is your real name, when we did that, we were kidding. And that's the buzz report for this week, everyone. I'm Molly Wood, and thank you for watching.